I'm seeing overgrowth value in the core. Look at the overgrowth. It could actually cover all three of the multi-infernos, and that's what he's doing. He's going to go, okay, 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 here we go. Overgrowth in the core of the base. Bastar on top of the scattershot. Navi versus Navi. We are into the upper bracket quarterfinals of the Coco Invitational. Two versus two. Satans and Picastro versus Stars and Kazuma. Let's dive into this match here. And let's see who's going to move on to face Rakiras and Darkstar in the semifinals. We are underway with Picastro. Remember, it's the Coco Invitational. It's creative format wars. And that means they're going to be trying to think outside of the box. And we're going to see that right out of the gate here. With five bat spells, we got skeletons, earthquakes, and overgrowth. And I guess we'll see what he can do here to set it up here. Got to get the value out of the heroes here to be able to make so that the Rockaboos can pick off the, everything on the edge of the base there. But I don't think he's going to have a lot of punch into the core. I'm kind of curious to see how he handles the core. He's just going to go ahead and overgrowth it. He gets the clan castle pull there with the king. Out comes the Lava Hound. Queen keeps making her progress into the town hall. He's got the Monothon locked down right there. But with 30 seconds, he's got to make his way in here. And he can keep the damage off of the queen while the overgrowth just locks up the area. While the king swings to the wide left side of the base there. Not losing out on the opportunity to snag out this air defense on the left side of the base there. He does drop in a single archer. And the queen keeps on moving. The town hall is waking up out of overgrowth now. But he was able to keep the expo fire off over. Now the ice golems are picking up the tanky right there. Stuck on grass, guys. Queen needs to hurry up and get the town hall down. She's got the healer puppet. King was using the giant gauntlet. And the warden will be deployed in a moment with the rage gem. And then the royal champion will pair with him over with the hog puppet and the haste valve. But here we go. The blimp is going to sail into the next part of the base. We're going to the eagle artillery. Interesting use of the overgrowth right there. But looks like he's dropping that electro dragon right into a dead zone. Of anything that can target it. So he's going to get the Eagle Artillery down right there. Pretty good value. Should be able to stay there and work on the defensive King takedown as well. But Rockapoo is going to go in and get this Multi-Inferno up top. All right. Just slowly, slowly dismantling the base. Just one step at a time. Remember, he has the Bat Spells. And if he can get the core of the base there wiped out. And deal with this Multi-Inferno, Multi-Archer Tower. And the scatter shot. Then the bats can take the rest here. He's still sitting on an earthquake, and he's going to go ahead and bat bomb the Inferno with the core of the base. He rages it up. He does power through it, and the rocket boost take out the multi archer tower and down south the warden and the world champion take out the scatter shot. He's got one left, one threat left here. Got to get past this wizard. Oh! Oh! Rip! Rip the bats right in the poison tower! Oh, <laughs> I thought he had it. I thought he had it, but I don't know anymore. I don't think he does. I don't think he can get past this king. Maybe the world champion can with the help of the warden here at the spirit fox, but he pops the hog puppet. He's not giving up on it. He keeps moving. He'll chase down all those defensive here. Or he, oh, he makes the defensive king invisible. He's going to get off of him and get over to the cleanup a little bit faster. But he's going to get back into the core of the base here and get the clan castle down. He's got Sneaky Goblins headed that way. He's got the rest of the bullets down. Tornado Trap holding him back. Big gas throw all the way to the finish line. He's got it. Oh, baby, it's a triple, and Picastro gets it done with the overgrowth and bats. I have to assume that he intended for the Electro Dragon to get the Poison Tower here. Because it wrecked his bats. And you can see that the Electro Dragon chained through it, but couldn't quite take it down. So, something that almost could have cost him the attack there. Almost did cost him the attack. But now it's dive into Kazuma. Getting ready for overgrowth and bats of his own. And he's breaking out with a whole group of Inferno Dragons. What is the what is the plural of Inferno Dragons? Um uh, a murder of it? No, that's crows. I don't know. What we I need to know. Chat, let me know. What is the plural, the official plural of a group of Inferno Dragons? A roost? Maybe? I don't know. But there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. He's gonna start in with one to go get the queen to go into the base. Queen running the frozen arrow, doing a queen charge. Warden is working with the queen. And the Inferno Dragons can potentially go in together, but I think they just need to go into wherever they need to to get the splash damage defenses down. But hold up, hold up. He's gonna go ahead and throw in a couple of balloons over to the left side of the base and get them to go in and tank for the Teslas for just a moment. Let the bats build up and then overgrowth out the middle of the base. But look at the percentage. Look at the percentage on the map right now. 
He does not have the town hall activated because he has not crossed 50%. The bats get the monolith down. Bats keep on moving. All of these splash damage defenses in the core have been disabled. The bats are going to get through this expo. Yeah, they will. I think at the expo, that'd be good value. All right, now we can get into the town hall area. Still got to deal with the Teslas there, the wizard tower, but town hall activates and bats probably weren't going to go much further than that anyways. It's the overgrowth wakes up, but he does get the heroes into the core and he needs to get them to take the turn to go back. He's got the world champion going in now, but the world champion, oh, she goes over the mortar. Okay, the core of the base is going to be trouble. The slabber's working on it, though. Inferno Dragon locks on and will secure the Town Hall with the invisibility, with the charged up beam, and an Electro Dragon arrives into the core. We'll take some chains through these multi Infernos, but more Inferno Dragons at the top of the base. Trying to direct target defenses where he can. Trying to power through the Tessa farm. RC still wrapping around there. RC still has her ability. More Inferno Dragons being delivered into the core of the base there where the Electro Dragon has left off. But the Queen went down. But the, the Ward is working with the World Champion now. And the World Champion still has the Hog Puppet and a Seeking Shield. She can toss those into the core of the base. There's a double freeze. Lock it down. Grass Cubs will stall out for a minute. But I think she's got it under control here. Inferno Dragons are swarming. And Kazuma. Making it happen! Taking advantage of the overgrowth to disable the splash damage defenses. Taking advantage of the town hall not being activated. That was a lot of multitasking. That was that was a lot of things going on at once. That is not easy to manage, especially when you're doing something that you're absolutely not proficient with because nobody is. I looked at all the entries for what a group of Inferno Dragons is called and I think that the Twitch chat has decided and I think the best answer was an oven. An oven of Inferno Dragons. Or a roast. Or a roost? I don't know. You guys decide. However, it's time for Satans. Going in with Super Giants and Bats. No overgrowth on this one, though. He'll start with a Warden Walk. I was looking to... <laughs> when I see these Warden Walks, I now have to look and see if they got a Fireball. Because I... Definitely have seen a lot of people breaking out the fireball to mix with the board walks, especially in these creative format wars. I don't know how good it's going to be in like competitive play, but it's definitely a fun thing to just kind of toss into an attack, you know? It's just satisfying to blow up uh, an entire section of the, of the base there with a fireball if you can find a good spot to board walk into, you know? However, Super Giants will begin in at the top of the base. Log Launcher will give them the path in. And he can run right through the Seagull Artillery. The King will try to cut out the funnel up ahead. He's got an Electro Titan there with the King. A couple Super Barbarians working on the outside of the base. They're trying to make sure the King stays in. He does take the turn back in. Almost went for a little bit of a walk. But he does stay under control. Warden will have the Life Gem here to boost the Giants and give them more HP. That's not a bad thing. I mean, Life Gem is always really good there with, uh, with Bloons, Hogs, Miners. All those, like, five troop space troops do fantastic with them and so giants and super giants are no exception right there 10 troop space I like that he does have the bats that he needs to set up for the bats need to be they need to have all the splash damage on the base they're removed before they can be deployed he's got the world champion we're going to scatter shot at the very top of the base there but the main push is able to secure the town takedown and he's all set up for the bats now the bats will deploy over the right and could end up providing some protection for the world champion but i'm looking at these wizard towers on the back side and they are the only threat that is really going to potentially cause any problems here. If he loses all the bats to them. But he's got a couple freezes. He'll throw ice golems back there. And ice golems, I mean, nice spot for a spring trap right around the edge of the wall there if they wanted to put one. But he's got multiple ice golems. He'll just go ahead and drop them into the backside. And I think he just swagged the freezes. Yeah, I think he's good. I think he just swagged the freezes here. Ice Golems lock it out as he has no real threats to the bats anymore. The heroes are going to survive and the cleanup is underway. It's another triple. And I guess the kill squad with the Super Giant is getting some good work done there. And he'll just swag a couple hero abilities here. And just another very clean attack here. And it's all triples across the board, which is definitely not an easy thing to do in these creative format tournaments. Especially after some of the wild attacks that we've seen so far. But we are just getting warmed up here as we're not even to the halfway point of this war. Nice job to Satan's. Zap into Golem Avalanche. And look at the... Uh, wait. How much could he get here with Lightning in the core? Could he get the Multi-Eagle and Ricochet Cannon? That's what he's going for. Obviously, that's what he's going for. And he's going to pair it with a Golem Avalanche. It started with Warden Walk, though. Just used the Warden Walk to break the ring of defenses, and 
Obviously, with him, with the Rage Gem, he's able to boost the healing output of his healers and push his way into the Expo without any difficulty. And that will break the ring of defenses here, and then we can begin the Avalanche. But do we go south or do we go north here? I, I feel like we go south. I feel like we go down to the Town Hall, but then again, taking the Town Hall Blast early in the attack there could end up hurting his overall force, and so he's going to delay it until later, and he will go north. He'll go right in the defensive kingdom, reducing the frozen arrow, and the healers will transfer over to the queen. we have got to be careful with that, because we could end up having the healers abandon the healing on one of the heroes there, and then leave them kind of surrounded with one of the other troops there stealing the healers and not giving them up. Happens way too often, I feel like. However, looks like everything's moving smooth here. Ward and Queen kind of standing on top of each other, but he would like almost the healers for the for the healers to move forward all the way up into the golems right now to keep the golems completely topped off here. But he's only got two golems out in front there. He's got a couple of extra troops there being tossed in the mix. And the log launcher is opening up the base. I see that he had a root rider. I don't even see where he deployed it. But the king was able to get the defensive row champion off of the left flank there. And the golems are taking the jump to be able to continue to advance into the base here. But the log launcher almost got the monolith down. And he was able to use the log launcher to activate the invisibility tower. But over the right side, looks like he's got the row champion moving in. She's running the hog puppet and the haze file. And they are able to work together there with the RC ability. Get the hogs out in front. And they're able to clear out the scatter shot over there and get the defensive queen down. Main force here gets into the town hall or really it was the valkyries that he had inside of his log launcher that got the town hall down and he's looking good here golems collapsing around the back of the base and it started as a golem avalanche and he's got extra golems still fully intact to finish it out there with a queen ability to swag and a couple of swag freezes and it's another triple for navi technically all the triples have been for navi but you know what i mean <laughs> It's all triples across the board there as we reach the half point of the war. Pete Castro started with some lightning here. Looks like the lightning was used onto the Inferno, the Multi Arch Tower, the Expo, and the Rage Tower over to the left side. And he will just use the Queen to quickly break the ring of trash next to where the lightning was used as he pushes in a flame flinger into the right side. And down south looks like we got baby dragons and balloons. Trying to go in and pick up these archer towers potentially, but he's got a couple of Tesla's that are causing problems there and uh, could end up messing up his funnel. He's trying to thin it out here to be able to get Inferno Dragons to go secure the Town Hall. He's sitting on two Inferno Dragons on standby, two deployed down south, and he will try to push them to the Town Hall, but it's not going to be an easy thing here because these Blues are going to activate the Town Hall. Ooh, this is trouble. This is trouble. I don't think he expected them to go that far to the base. But now the Inferno Dragons out there can't really get past the defensive king. He's got the an air... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Fireball spotted! Coming in from the left side, King and Warden making their way forward. King is directing the Warden's targeting. And he's gonna search forward and fight off the CC here. Now would be a good time to drop it, I think. Maybe, maybe he pops it. Okay, it goes, oh, it goes to the outside of the base over there. It went over to the, uh, okay. That wasn't the highest value, but it does give the King extra protection here with the Eternal Tome, so he's not wasting it, but down south, he drops in the Inferno Dragons, and they skip the King with the Invisibility. They get the lock on, and now he gets the core frozen up. The Warden keeps on working with the King. Can they get through that model? The Warden's working on it. Come on, Warden. Go, Warden. Go, Warden. Yeah, buddy, got it down, and now Baby Dragons around the base, and he's got it completely swarmed from every direction. He's gonna get it through. It wasn't very high value on the fireball there, but in the end, it's still a triple. He completely dismantles another base there from stars. And now Kazuma. Yes. <laughs> Kazuma, you are my hero. We are going to see an attempt at mass witches at Town Hall 16 with overgrowth. This one. Has me excited already. Let's see what we can do. Come on. Come on. I believe. I believe. If anybody believes in the witches, it's me. I'm the I'm witch's biggest fan. I should get like a, a medal. I, I actually wait, I, no, I lost it. I was gonna say I normally have like a witch pin like sitting on my desk there, but I think I took it off there to take it to Poland to go cast a Snapdragon Pro series. And then I forgot to even put it on when I got out there, which is unfortunate. It, it is what it is though. Wait a second. Is that an air warden? You put in an air warden? 
Warden is on air with a queen walk with witches. 14 witches. What is going on here? He's got the race gem. He's got the witches working to the right there. Slammer. This is this is not witch fam. This is not witch fam. You're doing witches wrong, Kazuma. If we're gonna run off with 14 witches, we gotta do with the spam, but with an overgrowth. He's uh, mixing things up even more. Come on. All right. Well, the king's going to make his way to the town hall. He's got that invisibility tower there. Would have been nice to catch that invisibility tower into the slammer or into the uh, into the overgrowth. But the king will step in and he'll get the town hall out of the way here very quickly. We get it in time. It's going to disappear on him. All right. Well, that's a little bit annoying, but maybe he'll go back for it in a minute. He's going to stay in the area there, but the queen keeps on working at the very top of the base with the warden. The witches are working at the very bottom. Overgrowth wakes up now and the slammer was able to go in and get the inferno down there. We'll throw yeti mites. Looks like the Yeti Mites are going to the Eagle Artillery right now, so King will secure the talent takedown. Skeleton spell tanking the Monolith right now. All right, all right. Is he okay? I'm not sure if he's got this right now. Roar Champion in for the right side. I've never seen witches done like this. I've never seen witches with overgrowth, first of all. But I've never seen tactical witches. It's always spam. But this is Kazuma, and so he's got to do it differently. Obviously, he's got the queen still working at the top of the base. Their wall breaker to the scatter shot. Roar Champion keeps on pushing through. Got the hog puppet level 15. Got another freeze on standby. Gets the multi down. Freeze the expo and step her way in. He's got it under control. It's a triple. It's a triple with mass witches. Tactical witches. This is something we've never seen before. Maybe. Maybe like one time, a long, long time ago, we maybe have seen like Klaus used tactical witches, but Kazuma, Kazuma gets it done today. 14 witches, look at that army comp again. What a wild one right there. I mean, he had, <laughs> that was so crazy. I don't even, I don't even know what to say. I'm gonna lost for words right now. The Twitch chat, yeah, words. The Twitch chat, that's really hard to say for some reason right now, is saying that the air ward in that attack was a mistake, but I don't think it was. He ran the electric owl, so we had a little bit of an insurance plan against black air bombs, but the healers will not try to lock onto the warden and the queen ends up staying safer when you run the air warden with the queen on the ground. So I don't even know that that witch attack intended to have a ground warden and the air warden, I, I think the air warden was intentional. You know what I mean? Anybody disagree? Do you, were you seeing something different than I was? Well, anyways, let's focus in on Satan's as he goes in with a Warden Walk and Overgrowth. Okay, okay, where's this Warden Walk trying to go? Warden Walk is going to go all the way around the north of the base here. Wrap it around the Overgrowth. He's going to go into that compartment there and I, I guess Flame Flinger is working its way towards the Town Hall. Going to get the Town Hall down with the Flame Flinger, I think. I think he can afford to miss that up there. I think he's going to go to it for his next target here. But Super Valkyries... Barch, Overgrowth, and a push through the Eagle Artillery as the Flame Flinger drives towards that Town Hall. But look at all the Wall Breakers here. Wall Breakers everywhere. Pops the Ward ability. Trying to get the Wall Breakers to get the walls open. He does not have any of the overpowered Root Riders in his attack. But he does get a Golem up at the very top of the base. And he will push the World Champion to push everything towards the middle. And maybe get into these scatter shots deep in the core. War Champion started very, very early, but has very good protection. Flame Flinger is still working down south. We'll get one of the multi-arch towers. And is damaging up the town hall right now with all the fire there that is just going to hit both of them at the same time. But there we go. We finally get the lock on for the town hall. The heroes are making their approach. And got to hurry up and get the town hall down before the heroes start taking damage from it. But the king's going to swing wide. And he's going to eventually go back. But the War Champion ends up taking the lead of the core of the base there. She does have the hog puppet. She does have the seeking shield. Town Hall going to start doing damage to her very, very shortly. Come on, Flame Flinger. Move it. RC Shield hits the Town Hall. Freezes the Town Hall with the other defenses around it. And look at the damage on the Town Hall right there. It's able to get the multi-arch tower weakened up. Rocket Blooms pop out. And now he's got the barge still moving. Kind of low on troops. Barbarians and archers swarm with the right side of the base there. No splash damage in the area, so they are doing some good work over there. But the Wizard Tower will shut them down in droves. Multi, or see, the, the double cannon, I mean, is barely going to be a slowdown for them as they just completely overwhelm it. And that's it. It's another triple. Navi gets it done again on both sides of the board. It's a perfect war for Satans and 
Picastro. But the question is now, can Stars close it out here and run double perfect in a creative format? <laughs> this is insane. <laughs> this is wild. Look at the army comp again here for Satan's. He had 10 super barbs, three healers, super Valkyries. He got the lightning, the overgrowth. It was a crazy, crazy attack there. But now this war will come down to Stars. In most wars, the tiebreaker is time. I don't think that time should be a tiebreaker in a creative format tournament. Oh my god. 13 super minions. Two overgrowth and all bat spells. And the war is on the line, stars. We believe. We believe. You got this. Gotta get the triple here. Gotta make sure this goes through. We've seen the crazy things the overgrowth and bats can do when paired together. But it looks like he's going to be driving this ward to the very top of the base there. Running the Rage Gem to boost his healing and get him through to the Expo, which will then be able to set up the Warden to go in with the heroes, I assume. Maybe get to the Town Hall. Maybe if he splits off to the right, he can go get the Town Hall down. I'm seeing Overgrowth value in the core. Look at the Overgrowth. It could actually cover all three of the Multi-Infernos, and that's what he's doing. He's going to go, okay, 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 here we go. Overgrowth in the core of the base. Bats start on top of the scattershot. Warden moving forward. He needs to get the bats protected here. There's no splash damage in the air until he hits the wizard tower, but the multi arch tower doing a lot of damage. Pops the ward ability. Barely catches the bat wave. It keeps on moving through. Regrouping, regrouping, regrouping. And ward ability wars off here. He gets the wizard tower down. He does not have the tunnel activated. The bats keep on swarming, but he needs another freeze right here. He's got it right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. He's got the ice globe on the outside, locking up the wizard tower out there. The overgrowth gets refreshed in the core of the base there. Passing 50% now as he gets over to the town hall. Ward is on top of it. Town hall is frozen from the ice golems. He's got that area locked down. He's got the bats working on the model right now on the invisible tower. Needs to get that uh, model down. Needs to get the queen to get in there and finish it off. But the overgrowth is still active. He still needs to get in that area here. But the queen's making her way towards the town hall. This is getting a little bit shaky right now. But he got a lot of value out of those bats. Holy cow. But the warden has gone. The king is gone. The queen picks up the town hall. Will fight off the CC. And now it's up to the world champion. But look at this. He's still got his clan castle troops. He's got a stone slammer selected right now. And he's currently sitting on... All of his super minions, but he puts in a couple super barbarians with the world champion. Super minions make it the way in for the right and will start to pick off the core. Slammer in for the left will start to go in and support the royal champion, but the expo did a lot of damage over there. Ricochet Cannon gonna do just as much. Over to the right side, the queen is still alive. Invisibility Tower is going to reset, and the Queen steps into it. The Queen is going to get some protection right there. And when she comes out of that invisibility, she can lock on and work the monolith down. If she can get that, that's a very, very big deal right here. It looks like she's on it. The Rocket Balloons and the Royal Champion out of that Slammer end up getting most of the core of the base down. But the Super Minions are starting to swarm now. Guys, he's, he has time taken away here. But it looks like his Queen survives until the end. The Super Minions pick up the Multi Inferno. He swarms across the top of the base there. And he's got it with a bunch of swag as well. And now I got to find out what the tiebreaker is. Stars gets it done. And he'll swag a big chunk of his army, but the bat wave, once again, makes it work. Navi wins. All right, the moral of the story here is Navi wins. Let's go, uh, let's go call Coco and find out what the, what the tiebreaker is here, yeah? Hello. Coco. Yes. Coco, what do we do? <laughs> What's the tiebreaker? <laughs> They're too good. They the tiebreaker is the tiebreaker is now a 1v1, so they'll pick Ooh. players, and it will go legend style, so they won't have long, and they'll have to go in straight away. Okay, okay, So it'll All be right. player one versus player one, and then player two versus player two if it's still the same, and then if it's still the same, player one versus player two, player two So we just go into one. a shootout. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> We're battling it out until the end now. This is amazing. All right, thank you. They are ready. They are attacking each other at the same time. They are both using a Lalo. Stars with Zap Lalo. Pete Castro is attacking Stars, and it looks like he is using a Queen Charge Lalo. We'll bounce back and forth between the two, but they will continue to exchange blows on friendly challenges until somebody ends up with the Miz. And because they're going in blind, they're going to use more meta strategies here. This will be more like what they do in Legend League, and it will not really... Uh, it really, won't really work for like the format that we have with the creative, but we'll see their skills to the test here with 
with no scouts. No scouts here. Let's keep that in mind. Obi Castro will get the queen to start the queen charge as the king was able to get the defensive world champion and get the eagle artillery. And, and did he get a model to, to uh, Okay, I lost track here. Okay, I'm getting scatterbrained here. I'm it's too crazy. <laughs> My heart's being fast for these guys. But the queen will find out the lava hound for just a minute. While she's finding that off here, let's bounce over to the other attack here. Let's go see what Stars is doing against his base. Looks like Stars is using a flame flinger into the very top of the base. And he's setting up for the hero dive to go in from the right. He needs to get the defensive queen under control and get the scatter shot under control. But they're going to make their way in and we'll go back and check out the queen charge now and see how that's going. I'm going to bounce back and forth here. It's not going to, it's going to make us all dizzy. It's going to be all chaotic here, but looks like the queen charge was able to fight off the lava hound. Flame flinger into the very top of the base there. Trying to get the queen to take the turn inward. She can't reach that multi inferno from that path, but he will wall break and that will actually open the walls that she needs to get through there. But the Queen running the healer puppet. He does have the Lalo start at the very bottom of the base. World Champion cut across the core. She'll get the multi inferno down, which saves the healers. The Queen keeps on moving. The Queen is looking healthy. RC gets into the middle, and she's got the hog puppet there, giving her extra support. Queen steps through, gets pulled forward by the ground skellies. And the ground skellies do end up causing the Queen to drag her healers into danger. She pops her ability, generates more healers, but skip the multi inferno, drops in more blooms behind. The multi inferno wrecked too many blooms here, gets away from it. Queen's still hanging in there just barely. More blues at the very top here, but those blues coming up to the left are going after the multi inferno right now. I don't want to bounce out of this and go see what the other one's doing until I see what happens with this multi red air bombs going off. Queen's going down. The spirit fox stole the healers. The spirit fox stole the healers off of the queen, and Pete Castro's gonna miss. It's a miss. What's going on on the other side here? Sars, what are we doing? Sars attacking. P. Castro, oh, sorry, it's the same attack, it's the same attack. Other one, other one, other one. Okay, that was a miss, 93%, logged right there. And Stars on the other side at 92, 93, 95. And it looks like Stars will settle this with a friendly challenge. And that means that Stars and Kazuma are advancing in the upper bracket of the Coco Invitational. Sorry, that was really chaotic. It was really, really chaotic there to try to track all that. I thought they were gonna attack separately, but as you can see, Stars and Kazuma will advance into the upper bracket semifinals where they face off with Rekiris and Darkstar. And then Picastro and Satans will not be eliminated. They will go down to the lower bracket where they land into a match with Sumit, 007, and Papa Magambo. So good luck to them in the future. But this match is concluded. Double Perfect War is settled.